So now we're at uh, Fort Stanton, which is right up the road from the Rob Jagger BLM campground that we're camped at. As you can see, some nice people shot holes in it. But uh, this is a uh, old <coughs> Civil War and Indian War, I guess, fort from 1855. Fort Stanton established April 1855 by a Brigadier General Garland named for Captain St Stanton killed near here in fighting Apaches, one of several forts controlling Indians and aiding westward migration, partially destroyed in 1861 before a Confederate approach reoccupied in 1863 by volunteers. Old Lincoln County Memorial Commission, 1851. 1951. Oh, 1951, sorry. <laughs> so that would have predated the fort. <clears throat> so, uh, this is a U.S. post office for Fort Stanton. And uh, one of the things that's interesting that, uh, I mean, well, it's closed right now because of uh, COVID-19, of course, everything is. But um, we used to watch this uh, show all the time uh, before we got into RVing called uh, Ghost Hunters. And Ghost Hunters was actually here last year and filmed an episode which aired in April of uh, 2020, which I want to watch probably whenever we get home after we've visited a little bit. Um, among the things that I kind of barely remember <clears throat> from looking it up is uh, they have a, a hospital that they built here that was used whenever, um, oh, geez, what was it? Uh, I'm gonna totally forget what yeah, outbreak it was. Bad. Yeah, we can walk in. Um, geez, it was uh, called consumption. What was it that uh, would kill people? There was like an outbreak of it. Um, yeah. Well, consumption is what they used to call it. But tuberculosis. Tuberc that's right, the TB. The days of uh, the TB infection. So that was another really bad thing that happened. And they uh, sent TB patients here. All right, so old Catholic chapel. In its original location with a new stone fa facade. So they must have rebuilt part of it. Originally built in 1913 on a wing of building 11 across the play parade ground. 1938 buildings 10, 11, and 12 were demolished, but the chapel was left freestanding. New stone facade was added to the old chapel consisting of stones from the original barracks hospital that was abolished. 1940, a new chapel was built on the site and the stone facade that was installed on the old chapel was dismantled, moved to this new chapel and reassembled. Now it says that they numbered and reset each stone in its original location. Officers' quarters, building four. Constructed in 1855, this building was originally a single-story complex of four quarters for officers and their families. It has evolved over time to be more spacious and comfortable with a second story, bay windows, and covered porches. Seen in the photo are buildings four, five, and six. Officers' quarters, quartermaster, and barracks. Also visible at the lower left of the photo are the remnants of Asquia. I'm going to butcher that. It's a Spanish word that I can't pronounce it. Or a water channel that surrounded the parade ground and brought fresh water and so forth. Now let's see. Fort Stanton was a beautiful post with the best quarters in the army at that time, but it was like being buried alive to stay there. Nothing ever passed that way, and it was seldom a stranger came among us. Written by Olivia Spencer Lane, officer's wife. museum yesterday. Yep, hospital. This new hospital building replaced the old tubercular hospital buildings 10 and 11 in 1936. 
It was state-of-the-art when constructed and boasted a bed capacity of 85 patients in the first elevator in the state of New Mexico. Doctors that were stationed at Fort Stanton were tubercular patients themselves. The photo above shows the building that occupied this location before the hospital. It was originally built as a quartermaster warehouse and later converted to the facility power plant to burn coal to produce electricity and steam. Barracks and Dining Hall. Yeah, looks kind of like a barn with wings. This building, like most, has been modified numerous times to suit the needs of the entities that managed it. <laughs> the entities that managed it. Originally built in 1855 as a barracks for a company of soldiers, it also contained a small quarters for the laundresses. The army expanded the building several times to keep up with the changing needs of, the soldier, of its soldiers. During the hospital era, this building was used as a dining hall for staff and patients who were always separated. Yeah, I mean, this fort has evolved many times. That's a pretty cool looking building there. Let's go see what that is. Okay, hospital administration. A picture of TB patients in front of the hospital administration building. Looks like there used to be a bell hanging down. Building 7, this building was constructed of local stone by troops of the 1st Dragoons and 8th Infantry as a barracks in 1855. <clears throat> it was utilized in that capacity until the fort was closed by the Army in 1896. In 1900, it received its most interesting architectural features and became the administration building for the hospital. Administration building. This building, like most others on the parade ground, was first constructed in 1855 as a single-story stone structure. It included an ad... Oh, God, don't ask me to pronounce that. Adjutant's office, library, and guardhouse. Later remodels added a second floor and an arched porch. It was known as the amusement building by the hospital and included a general store, telephone exchange, post office, and a 174-seat theater on the second floor. Wow. Two nights a week they showed movies. So they had a special movie for the patients and a special movie for the staff because they had to have everybody segregated. So... This picture is really all that's left of the original building 12, which used to be attached to building 13. It was apparently a uh, <clears throat> commissary and storage room, so it housed two years worth of provisions for the fort. Crazy. But they uh, tore it down in 1930 also with the TB hospital. And this looks a lot like the officer's quarters. It's probably barracks. Yep, officer's quarters. So, the sign that I read over there, <clears throat> that said that they tore down Building 12, and uh, it was attached to Building 13. Whenever they raised Building 12, a section of it fell through uh, the ladies' bedroom in Building 13. structure of simple design and construction this building housed officers and their families this looks very new over here it has to be the museum <laughs> it'd be a pretty good greenhouse huh Nice little porch area. Here's the thing that I swore it was a garage. Apparently it is not. So during World War II, they apparently used this to intern uh, German sailors. As part of the New Deal envisioned by President Roosevelt, a civilian conservation corps camp was built in 1934 across the Rio Bonito from the fort. 
the Fort Stanton CCC employed civilians in soil conservation, forestry, and women's programs, as well as providing labor at Fort Stanton and the surrounding area. The camp closed in 1940. In 1941, the camp was reoccupied, but this time by the 410-man crew of the German luxury liner SS Columbus. Wow, a German luxury liner, eh? The ship had been scuttled by its crew to avoid capture by the British, and the distressed seamen were rescued by the U.S. Navy. Upon their arrival, the sailors began improving the camp by constructing several new barracks, support facilities, and an Olympic-sized pool. Wow. Really. They made it even better. The crew was far removed from the horrors of World War II, but were never considered prisoners of war, only interned alien enemies. By the summer of 1945, they had all been sent home. A few Japanese-American detainees occupied the camp for several months, but by October of 1945, the camp was closed again. Commanding officers' quarters, ooh, wow. Pretty cool looking. They must get a lot of snow here. I mean, why else would they have a raised walkway to the other building over there? and snow. It's strange, but every once in a while, you come across a random patch of snow. It's been like in the 60s the last couple of days, but there's still random patches of snow. So, what's the tiny little house with its own chimney for? Hmm. I think we must the see it. Or bathroom, or generator. Probably bathroom. But we will never know. This is across the street from the fort that we were just at. And <clears throat> this is where the uh, stables and corrals were. It says that whenever the uh, buildings burnt down in 1877, they rebuilt them out of uh, stone. But then whenever it turned into a TB hospital, they turned this into a dairy and <clears throat> had silos and uh, granary here. Said that they produced most of their own food and also supplied other facilities.
You don't see the people though. No. I haven't seen a soul. We've just seen that open door on the car, but it's been like that for an hour. <laughs> yeah, it was a van with the car open. I mean, you know, as far as grain silos go, I think that one looks pretty cool. Early 1900s grain, grain silo. Still going around the stables. And now we're in Fort Stanton, which is there. But we're gonna take the little car and uh, go explore a little bit in the hills. So 1861 is whenever the Union troops uh, burned it down, I guess. Wait, so they burned it and then they reoccupied it. Interesting. Installed as a lasting tribute to the employees and patients of Fort Stanton who served their country in World War II, November 19. You know, this is a uh, grill, right? It's a fireplace, fire pit. Thanks for hanging out with us this Halloween. Uh, we really enjoyed looking at this place and enjoyed it too. Yep, it's pretty interesting. I love the stuff like this. I just wish that, uh, you know, it was open <laughs> and had tour guides. But, you know, we can call it an always, we can always come back. Once we eradicate the virus. Though.